since I've had the ablation, I've been able to go from walking very short distances to exercising two and three times a day. And that's up to maybe 40, 50 minutes with no problems. I can feel my heart beating for years because it, it had a heavy thump to it even when it was in a rhythm because of the medication slowing everything down. It had a real heavy boom, 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 and I couldn't feel that. And I thought, wow, I really, I thought it was really neat. I could take meds every day to calm that heart rate down for the rest of my life, and I'm 26, so I didn't want to do that, so I thought the, the ablation would be a good option instead. I can't say there was any real uncomfortable part, and I don't think there were any surprises because everyone had done such a good job of briefing me about what to expect. You and your doctor have discussed reasons for cardiac ablation, recommendations related to your specific situation, and potential risks. Now you are scheduled for an ablation at Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center. This program will provide information on what you can expect in the cardiac admission unit, the procedure room, and after the ablation, including discharge from the hospital. You might be nervous or even frightened, or you may be relieved. I was a little nervous at first, because it's my heart, and I don't want someone messing with it, and being inside of my heart and figuring that all out. I was a little bit apprehensive, um, but as the time grew near, you know, and I had a few more episodes, and I was actually, by the time it happened, I was looking forward to it. I wasn't anxious about it at all. In every procedure you have, there's an element of risk, but so is there any time you get in a car. Cardiac ablation procedures create small scars that destroy the abnormal cells causing the heart rhythm problem, or blocked paths of an arrhythmia, to prevent it from advancing to other cardiac tissue. Radiofrequency ablation is a specialized and highly controlled procedure that uses heat to scar the cardiac tissue inside the heart. Cryoablation is an alternative method that creates lesions by freezing the tissue. Both radiofrequency and cryoablations are accomplished through long, thin catheters inserted into the veins in the groin. Cardiac ablations can be quite successful for rhythm problems that arise in the upper chambers of the heart or atria. Some of these are called supraventricular tachycardia or supraventricular arrhythmias and have unique names that describe the type of arrhythmia. Atrial fibrillation, or AFib for short, has its own category. You may be able to identify your arrhythmia from this list. All cause your heart to beat rapidly, sometimes in an uncoordinated way, so that your heart does not efficiently pump blood throughout your body. Symptoms may be minor or severe and differ for each person. One day, while I was resting, I went into um, a rapid heart rhythm, and I could feel it just faster than I could count my heart rate, and I had chest pain. But it wasn't like sweaty and that kind of chest pain, just it hurt, and I knew something was wrong. Uh, for several years, uh, my heart would skip a beat and then race and then uh, ultimately it, it got to the point where I was uh, in atrial fibrillation as much as I was out of it. I was at a gym and I was just doing kind of a walk jog on a treadmill and it was not too crazy strenuous I thought but it was enough for me um, and my heart rate kind of skyrocketed and I could feel my heart beating um, really fast. It felt like my chest was vibrating and I took my pulse and it felt to be above 200 and I knew that was too fast. The length and complexity of your ablation will vary depending on the type of rhythm problem and your personal health history. Although serious complications are possible, they are very rare. If you are at increased risk for complications, your doctor will discuss it with you. 
Be sure you talk to your doctor about your concerns or questions. These arrhythmias tend to result in shorter procedures than atrial fibrillation and are usually very successful with low rates of reoccurrence. While you will be prepared in the CARA, the cardiac admission unit, in much the same way as the more extensive AFib ablation, the duration of the procedure may be anywhere from 45 minutes to 2 hours compared to the approximately 3 to 5 hours for AFib ablations. These four procedures may involve lighter sedation than is required for AFib ablations, and you may or may not spend the night in the hospital. So you have your SA node, which is where the electrical impulse starts, and your AV node where it travels to next, and that is where the issue was, and there was an electrical pulse that would just circle around the AV node, and he ablated that so that it wouldn't keep circling there and causing this weird heartbeat that I had. Um, they called it an AV nodal reentrant tachycardia. AV and RT. So I had at my AV node just a circle loop. It would just loop and loop and, and it would just get stuck in there and would just go brrrr. So I had both um, radio frequency and cryoablation so that they could protect that AV node and not the cryoablation is more forgiving than the radio frequency. My doctor was really good at explaining the different procedures for what part of my heart could be the trigger for the rhythm that I was going in. It could have been uh, around the AV node, the most common, which is what I had, or it could have been another location. You know, I got there and they got me all prepped and gave me an IV and they were very nice and I wasn't nervous, but they would be very calming to somebody who was nervous about the procedure um, and then afterward I just I had to stay flat on my back for about an hour and then after that I could just I walked out I was only there for about mm, two or three hours after the procedure was done before I could go home. AFib affects millions of Americans. Ablation, especially pulmonary vein isolation, often called PVI for short, has become the procedure of choice to stop AFib. For people with a type of AFib that comes and goes on its own, or paroxysmal AFib, PVI is about 60 to 75 percent effective the first time and up to 85 percent for subsequent ablations. AFib ablation is a more extensive procedure than other ablations because it involves the left side of the heart. Isolating the pulmonary veins necessitates small punctures in the wall between the right and left atria to allow the catheters to pass to the left atrium. These punctures will heal. AFib ablation requires an overnight hospital stay so you can be closely monitored after the procedure. In a certain percentage of people, the first time doesn't work. So sometimes it takes a second time and sometimes after that it even takes a third and even a fourth time but that she was willing to continue doing them until we were able to fix this. I went in on Friday morning I was out Saturday about one in the afternoon and um, you know they walked me around six o'clock the next morning on Saturday morning and then I just kind of laid around by one o'clock I was gone and um, and boy I rested. I think the maximum time that I was off of work was five days, but that included a weekend. So one of the times was three days. And then of course you don't go back and start digging ditches. You, you take it a little easy, but depending on what your job description is. The remainder of this program specifically describes what to expect if you are to have an AFib pulmonary vein isolation procedure. You're not allergic to A nurse will contact you prior to your procedure to go over your history and medications. At that time, you will receive instructions on how to prepare for your procedure, such as where to go, when to arrive, and when you must stop eating and drinking. After checking in at the front desk of the Heart Institute Care Unit, you will be admitted to a room where you will change into a gown, empty your bladder, and be prepared for your procedure, including blood work, an IV and cardiac monitor. Your groin area will be shaved where specialized catheters used for the procedure will be inserted. 
Your nurse will complete your admission history. You will also meet with your anesthesia provider. When it's time for the ablation, you will be wheeled to the electrophysiology lab. In the EP lab, using advanced technology, you will be cared for by a specially trained team consisting of a registered nurse, electrophysiology technicians, an anesthesia provider, and your electrophysiology doctor. You will be connected to a heart monitor and have pads applied to your back for the defibrillator and the three-dimensional heart mapping technology. You will be sedated and given general anesthesia. When you are asleep, another IV will be inserted, a urinary catheter placed, and the femoral veins on both sides of your groin accessed. For AFib PVI ablations, four to five small sheaths are inserted in your groin two or three on one side and two on the other, through which the mapping and ablation catheters are introduced. Pulmonary vein isolation means that the radiofrequency or cryoablation catheter forms lesions around your pulmonary veins to isolate the arrhythmia. During the procedure, your doctor will check to see if the problem rhythm can be induced after the lesions are made. I thought it was very interesting, actually. Um, it was the first time, I'd have to say, that I'd ever, had ever gone into an operating room fully awake. They did, I mean, they had me ready to go, but I was absolutely as awake as I am right now. And so I got to see the new technology and the work I'm in. It was very fascinating to me, and I really wasn't, I was okay with it. I think that it was like, I, I was really had high hopes that this was going to be it. They put a lot of pads with, with adhesive on you and there are some large ones they put on your back that feel like they've been in the freezer for a while and so that'll take your breath for just a little bit and so then you lay down there are people working and talking and busy and then somebody squirts the juice in in the uh, in the tube and you're asleep. After your ablation, you will be taken to the recovery room where you will be carefully monitored until you wake up from the anesthesia. When you are awake and stable, a nurse will transport you to your room. Give your blood pressure 15 minutes until the squeeze here. Then I'm also going to be checking your groin site. To prevent bleeding from your femoral veins, it will be important for you to remain on your back with your upper body no higher than a 30 degree angle. During this time, you will not be able to lift your head or cross your legs. It may take several hours until your clotting time returns to normal and the groin sheaths can safely be removed, if they have not already been removed in the electrophysiology lab. Then your urinary catheter will be taken out and you can get up and move around. The first time you get out of bed, it is important that a nurse assist you. The nurses will continue to watch for any bleeding at the puncture sites and monitor your heart. You may receive pain medication if you experience discomfort from the procedure. I pick my head up and I burst one of the incision areas and I thought, I could feel a tingling sensation. I reached down by my groin and it's like, oh my God, ah. hit the button and they came in and I was bleeding quite profusely. And so it kind of delayed my exit for about eight hours, I think. Um, but I was out the next afternoon. Soon it will be time to go home. You should not lift objects over 10 pounds for several days so you don't cause any bleeding at the groin puncture sites. Your medications will be reviewed along with any new prescriptions and instructions given for scheduling a follow-up appointment with your electrophysiology doctor. Your doctor will want you to relax and take it easy at home for three to five days, after which you can resume normal activity. This program has covered what to expect if you are having a cardiac ablation with a focus on AFib pulmonary vein isolation. Be sure to talk with your doctor about your own individual circumstances.
when it comes to something like this, there really is no such a thing as a dumb question. I mean, right down to where the bandages are going to go, how much of me are you going to shave, what, you know, there's no dumb question because it's something that's that you need to ask everything that comes into mind. I think the best advice is to look at their own personal history and the risk benefit. And in my case, the risk was minimal and the benefit was huge. I would just encourage people to do, just follow the directions, do their research, ask as many questions as they can. And, um, you know, if they're nervous about it, then take a couple months because you can take the meds and, and be managed that way before you have somebody, you know, ablate your heart. To trust your cardiologist and if, if the doctor tells you that this is the best thing for you to, to believe it and not have a lot of anxiety about it because uh, the reason they're doing it is to make you feel better and you truly will.